This is the M Audio Oxygen Pro 25. It also comes in other sizes, including a mini version, which is only $119, and 49 and 61 key versions. This keyboard aims to do a lot, including giving you hands-on control of Ableton Live, FL Studio, Logic, Studio One, Reaper, Pro Tools, Cubase, GarageBand, and more. And while I do have a couple of things to complain about, I think they've delivered a lot. So. Does it live up to the hype? And is it right for you? And how does it compare to other keyboards at this price? You'll find out in this video. If you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I've got lots of videos about music production and the latest music and budget gear on my channel. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I always get to the good stuff first in my tutorials and reviews. Shout out to Zounds for helping me get this keyboard. If you caught my Black Friday video, you'll know that Zounds has some of the best deals on gear these days, not sponsored, just saying. If you want to get this M Audio keyboard, you'll find links in the video description to the best prices on Zounds, Sweetwater, and Amazon. All right, first of all, I'm going to be demoing the features on the 25 key version, which has full size semi weighted keys with aftertouch, just like the 49 and 61 key versions. The mini version has mini keys without aftertouch, but the mini version has 32 keys, which I love. I always find that 25 keys are a little too few, but with the 25 key version, you also get more pads. If you move up to the larger 49 or 61 key versions, you get more knobs and faders, slightly different button layouts. If you want full size keys, my advice is to go for the 49 key version at least. Is it worth it for the keys? Yes, I really like the feel of the full size keys on the 25, 49, and 61 key versions of this keyboard. The key feel exceeded my expectations at this price range. This is one of two winning features on this keyboard. I'll get to the other one a little later. The keys are semi-weighted, so don't expect a piano-like feel, but still, the touch is comfortable, playable, and no annoying springy sounds. I've complained about the springy sound of the keys on the Nectar keyboards, but these are quiet and premium. So how's the build quality overall? Well, it's good. The knobs feel decent. The buttons and faders feel fine. The buttons do have a loud clicky sound when you press them. I don't like this, but some of you prefer the click. The screen is bright and useful. The pads feel good and remind me a lot of the response on Akai devices. Not the top tier Akai stuff, but still good. You've got pitch and mod wheels, even on the mini version. I really prefer the wheels to joysticks or strips. Very nice. On the back, you've got USB out, a pedal port, and a MIDI port to connect to synths. By the way, this keyboard really packs a lot of features for beginners, including scale and chord functions. I'll get to those in a bit, but first, I wanna cover the second winning feature of this keyboard, DAW control. If there's one thing that so many keyboards don't get right, it's DAW control. Things like play, stop, record buttons, mixer control, and more, especially in the budget price range. The M Audio Oxygen Pro got it right and delivers awesome control for so many DAWs. By the way, what's more important to you, DAW control or key feel? Comment below. I tested this keyboard with Ableton Live, FL Studio, Logic Pro, Studio One, and Reason, and everything worked. Well, almost everything. By the way, these keyboards also provide dock control for Pro Tools, Reaper, Cubase, GarageBand, Bitwig, and MPC Beats. If you heard your DAW in this list, you're gonna be happy. Ableton Live users even get clip and scene triggering. Now, some DAWs have more control on this keyboard than others, but the core features are kind of covered for every DAW. And there are even shortcuts for save, quantize, view, and undo. Some DAWs will give you control of pan and sends. It's very rare that a keyboard covers so many DAWs. Now, I should mention that I had some trouble with small things like the play button in FL Studio and device control in Ableton, but I believe these are things that can be fixed with software or firmware updates in the future. Now, I have one issue with the marketing of the Oxygen Pro keyboards. They advertise these with one-touch DAW auto 
auto mapping, making it sound as though you just select your DAW on the keyboard and you're ready to go. But in reality, there are several more steps you need to take in your DAW to get it right. Granted, this is a one-time setup and most of us just use one DAW, but still, just keep that in mind. You'll be spending several minutes getting this setup right. Anyway, let's move on. You've got faders and knobs to control different features. The knobs are not endless like so many other keyboards on the market today from Native Instruments, Akai, and Arturia. I do prefer endless encoders because the keyboard keeps track of where the corresponding knob or fader is in your DAW, but on this keyboard, you'll have to turn the knob back and forth to find its place. The inclusion of faders on the mini version, the 49 and 61 key versions is really nice. Faders will let you control multiple tracks with one hand. Again, you won't find this on most small keyboards. M-Audio also allows you to control the included virtual instruments with the knobs, which is innovative, but the execution of this is not optimal. To control Expand 2, for example, you have to press the DAW slash preset button, then hold down the same button to enter a menu, then select Expand from the menu, and then you're good to go. That's a lot of steps to take for virtual instrument control. If you use Ableton, you can get to device control much faster by pressing shift and selecting the device pad. By the way, these keyboards come with a bunch of free software. I'll get to that in a second. Now, more small keyboards are including screens these days, and this screen is quite useful. You can navigate features, check out your ARP, scale, and chord settings, and more. You're not gonna be looking at it a lot, but it definitely gives you good information on the more advanced features. And the screen is larger and easier to read than the screens on the Native Instruments and Novation keyboards. The screen is especially useful when you start using the performance features, pressing Shift, plus chord or scale or ARP lets you access more options. Let's take a look at the performance features next. Hey, if you're looking for some modern sample packs and free stuff for EDM, trap, hip hop, and also a beautifully sampled Rhodes instrument, check out my merch below this video. I've even got some free instruments and samples to download. Friday Night is a sample pack featuring hard hitting drums for trap, pop, hip hop, and inspiring chords and ARPs. Aurora is a MIDI chord progression pack perfect for starting new ideas because you get the audio samples and the MIDI chords for kicking off tons of ideas. If you'd like to support my channel, check them out, as well as high quality t-shirts, hoodies, and gear for all you artists, storytellers, and beat makers out there. All right, the performance features of this keyboard rival the best out there. First, they've included scale and chord features, which are great if you're new to music theory. Turn on chords, set a scale, and you'll have chords corresponding to that scale on each key. Very useful. When you set a scale, the M Audio keyboard eliminates the wrong notes. Well, actually the scale function doesn't really eliminate wrong notes, but duplicates the correct notes, which is a little confusing if you ask me. But I grew up playing the piano, so this layout actually might work for you. The ARP feature is quite extensive, not as good as the Novation keyboards, but still good enough for most. You can set octave range, movement, gate, and swing. Now the latest Novation keyboards feature more randomizing features like DV8, which are very creative. If you want the very best ARP features, check out those keyboards. The Oxygen Pro keyboards also feature note repeat, which is super fun to use for drums. So what else do you get with this keyboard? Well, software. All versions of this keyboard come with Pro Tools First, MPC Beats, and Ableton Live Lite. And they've included very nice instruments from Air, including Hybrid 3, Velvet, Mini Grand, Vacuum, Boom, and DB33. If you're starting out, this is a pretty good collection. All right, so how does this keyboard compare to other keyboards out right now? Well, I think it does very well. They've delivered on all the performance features and the DAW control is top notch for all the most popular DAWs. That's a huge feat. Now, if you're a hardcore Ableton user, Novation will deliver tighter integration and a couple extra features on their Launch Key Mark III keyboards. And if you really want solid virtual instrument control, 
Native Instruments and Artoria will give you much better integration with their own virtual instrument collections, including the ability to select presets. Also, Native Instruments uses the NKS standard, which means better control of more plugins from more plugin companies. But Native Instruments does not put drum pads on their keyboards, and they cap their knob count at eight even on their larger keyboards. If you're looking for an 88 key keyboard with similar DAW compatibility, check out the Arturi Essential 88 here. Overall, I really like what M Audio has done with this range. Now, setting up the Oxygen Pro keyboards can be a little tricky if this is your first MIDI controller. I'll add a link in the video description to set up instructions for different DAWs. If you'd like to get the M Audio Oxygen Pro keyboards, you'll find links to the best prices in the video description. I think you're gonna like this keyboard. Hey, if you like this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Keep making the music you love. And hey, check out one of these videos next.